Good evening. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. We're going to talk about reconcile in Christ. And reconcile, the prefix now, is to re, return. Remember that, the prefix. And most of the teaching, reform, redemption, reconcile, uh, uh, restore, all this imply that we're coming back. He's drawing us back. Keep that in mind because it's very important. Um, Colossians in the Constitution, the first chapter and the 19th verse, let us read. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And this is Paul speaking now to the Colossians. And by him to reconcile all these things to himself. By him, whether things on the earth or whether things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to nitpick right now on certain things. We have the cross as a symbol, which should never be a symbol. You know, it should never be. He's king of kings and lord of lords. That's a fact. As a young man, young, a young man told me one day, that's a fact, Jack. You know, uh, uh, Jesus is who he is. He's king. And I, I, I never wear a, a cross around my neck due to the fact that, first of all, I'm not a slave of sin. And then it's a signal of, 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 uh, uh, of, of not giving Christ his due recognition. He is king. The cross was a very sinful and a cursed thing that, uh, hallelujah, that uh, uh, um, uh, men were crucified and hung that way. It wasn't a good sign at all, you know. And, 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 and keep in mind, Jesus no longer resides there. That's not a symbol of his. He sits on the throne next to his father. Uh, the Constitution bears this out. So I want you to understand something, that Jesus is who he is. He's king of kings and lord of lords. And regardless if you embrace him or not, he still is that, you know. And there will come a time, as Malcolm X say, uh, the chickens will come home to roost. In other words, there's going to come a reckoning where you're going to have to answer for your deeds. So it's better for you to do now is embrace the kingdom of God and be who you are. You have gifts, you have talents, you have abilities that God have installed in you, has given you, that you could uh, 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 help uh, replenish the world. You see, gifts and talents that God has given you is to draw, is to help the kingdom, draw people to the kingdom, have individuals come and surrender their lives and want to know about the kingdom and the concept of the kingdom. And remember, God has instilled this concept. He has made this concept. Every idea, everything that you may have, everything that's transpiring right now throughout the world, these are gifts that God has given, ideas that God has given mankind. But he's not responsible for how you use them. If you want to know how they to be used, draw close to the Father. And these things he will give you revelation knowledge. That's why he left us the word that we may grow by, be stronger by. God has set in certain things, the Father has set, set certain things in motion that we should apply our minds to. The word of not religion. Stay focused on what God has done for you. Stay focused. Because when you got up this morning, it was his air that you breathed. Thank him for the, the establishment around you, whether it's large or small. It's God that did it. And see, he's good. Many of us have acquired things through uh, uh, scheming and, 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 and through unorthodox means. And yet, he keeps up alive because he has a purpose for our life. 
And you have to draw nigh to him to understand that. Let us read the 21st verse. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind. And that's what's going on right now. That's why Paul wrote, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In order for you to get that mindset, detox yourself from all those things that is contrary to the word, to his word. I'm not talking religion. Many of you individuals, many of you brothers, you haven't picked up a book to read. Many of you leaders, you haven't picked up anything to read, to study it. If you pick up God's constitution, let the Holy Spirit guide you. When you get hungry for that word, to know more about the kingdom, it will come to you. In many ways, in many directions, I can't even tell you, begin to tell you. I'm a witness to that. Let us go on and read. Alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. We're talking kingdom here. Where does your morality stand? Where does your character stand? Men, stand firm on what you believe. Don't be wishy-washy. There's so many preachers and pastors right now. You know, I know, I, I know one pastor in particular, you know, uh, among many, but, you know, his own workers don't believe in his word anymore. Your word is your bond. If you don't keep your word as a believer in Christ, then guess what? There's not much to be said of you. Your word should be structured with your personality. When you speak, your life should exhibit what you believe. You should be able to do things among other people and stand and let other people, when people come up to you with things unorthodox and things that against your character, where's the boldness? Where's that holy boldness that speaks out and says, no, 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 that's, <laughs> those are not my principles, man. Those are not my principles. Your principles and what you believe should be one. Your public, your private life should exhibit your public life, how you think, how you behave. You can't act one way, one way, one place, and then act some uh, totally different number place. No, that's inconsistent. If one thing about a, ca a kingdom citizen, they are consistent. They're consistent with what the king says. They're consistent of how they behave. They are consistent. You can always tell a righteous man because he's consistent. His yes is yes and his no is no. He's not half-stepping. Let us go on and read. I want to say this to you. We take Jesus' patience for lightly, his grace for, 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 no, for nothing. We do what we want to do. We say what we want to say. And then we want the best that the king has to offer. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, Go wait in Jerusalem until the comforter comes. Because when you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life, you become so wishy-washy, it's a shame. You become just like every, everyone else. That's why the atheists are the way they are. That's why homosexuals are the way they are. They have taken God's word so lightly that bishops who are gay are claiming, hey, to be a gay bishop, but you're not a kingdom citizen. Big difference. So I'm going to say this to you before I go. Embrace the kingdom of God. The next few sessions, I will be saying this on a constant basis. 
Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Have a good day. Thank you.